Good afternoon, folks. This is Claudine here at Rascal and Crow Farm. Uh, this is just a little segment on what happens sometimes when you process your mor morel slurry, and over the years you may find that you have morels in the funniest places. So here in the back, we, as you can see, we have some wood chips here on the ground. Now we process our wood here for chopping uh, to put away for uh, for drying for our wood stove each year. And as you can see, we have a bunch of stumps under here. Um, under our under our plastic here, we got our overwintering. We've had them covered, and of course, some moisture gets in there. So we'll have to chop them up and further dry them this summer. So anyway, to show you, uh, when you process your slurry in little places like this that have lots of wood chips and whatnot, it's kind of a nice uh, sort of semi-primed area for your morels to grow. Uh, it gets sun in the afternoon. Um, it is kind of cloud, or not cloudy, but it is uh, shady in the morning. And so sometimes you'll come up with a nice surprise from the uh, dripped slurry of your morels. When you when we process our morel slurry, we process them over here. And uh, so sometimes when we walk through with our buckets, we tend to spill a little. And the result of it is this. So we have right there, as you can see, we have some beautiful morels and uh, there's a blonde on the left and on the right's the light brown one and then of course we have the black one so the left one i believe is the escalente escalenta um, some people call it escalente but it's with an a at the end and then the right one i forget what the name of that is and then uh then you've got the the um I believe the black one is uh, 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 Marcella uh, con uh, con con uh, Is it Conica? I believe. Uh, so anyway, so this is uh, you'll just look up the um, Latin names to them. It has escaped me. I have to look them up. It's been so long that I've forgotten. So um, I did have uh, the three varieties that I sewed, and they came together mixed. So. Um, now you know, we have the other ones too. And also, uh, so you can see what I did was I placed a little bit of charcoal to give a little bit of extra nutrients to the ground, as well as the wood chips, which they love uh, feeding those little morels. So um, I've had some around, just around this area here. We have uh, things going on back here. So we have tarps covering and sometimes they even like to be under a tarp. They start growing under a tarp. Anyhow, to show you here, we have a little pink flag there, as you see. Now this, where this pink flag was, is where I picked a nice big morel. Um, and in this little area, we had about four last year. And so I purposely also sewed in there. It took six years for us to get morels here in this little area. And so they do come up and you got to keep just looking around, even though you don't see any after you sewed, you just never know. Just look at all the areas that you may sew. So this is just to show you what happens sometimes in a little area like this that's got lots of wood chips um, that are breaking down. And when you walk around and uh, they break down further and the morels love this little kind of nutrition there for them. So I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed this little segment on where your morels can grow by accident after dripping your slurry or even putting them purposefully. They like a semi-shade. Um, and so uh, with lots of um, leaf matter and uh, wood chips and whatnot that are natural, which they get here a lot. So uh, I'll have the funniest places that they grow. And I always look around. So I hope this was informative. And just to give you a heads up to keep looking around wherever you process them um, and walking with the slurry and further diluting them that this can happen. So thanks for joining us, folks. I hope this was um, a fun little video for you. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye for now.